Chapter 32. Zebby, have you been keeping up with our reading? When we left off yesterday, Flora and Sophia were going off on their own trying to find the dog. Are we ready to find out what happens? Okay. We've lost our trail, Sophia called out the next morning. Last night's wind must have blown it away, but we can still turn back. She had climbed a tall ice pillar and was looking at the tracks leading back to camp, which were deeper and somewhat visible. Flora tried not to show the panic in her heart as she stretched and sniffed around for a clue. Surely they weren't defeated after just one day. Turn back then. I want to find that crazy sick dog and the boy who won't listen to his captain. If I turn around, you better stick with me, pig. You couldn't find an iceberg if you were standing on it. I could if I had a friend who told me to look down. She looked up at Sophia and noticed something. The block of ice Sophia was standing on had been scraped. There was a line at about the height of Flora's head, as well as another mark at the same height a little farther away. Tracks, she called up. You're looking in the wrong place. Tracks are on the ground. Alaric's not the most experienced driver. I think the sides of the sled might have bumped into the chunks of ice here and there. See if you can spot any more scrapes. Sophia gazed in the direction Flora was looking and then hopped down. You're right for once. From up there, I can tell which direction they were heading. Flora grinned. Then let's keep moving, Cat. I found the iceberg. Now you find our friends. Sophia stepped into the lead, occasionally leaping to the top of an ice mound to check her course. Two hours later, they found the spot where Oscar and Alaric had spent the night. Alaric had made a small fire, and a few bits of charcoal could be seen in the snow. They were almost through the field of giant broken ice by now. Sophia climbed to the top of one last pillar. Flat country ahead, she shouted, and clear tracks again. Pick up the pace, slowpoke. Flora was so happy to hear the good news, she didn't bother to respond to the insult. She started clipping along a little faster, and soon she could see the flat plain herself. Apparently, the wind and sleet hadn't blown through there during the night. However, they were up on a ridge, and to get to the plain below, she and Sophia would have to find a way down a long slope of sheer ice. There was no snow on it at all. Anything on the ice simply slid to the bottom. Flora could see the scrapes where Alaric must have tried to drag his boots to slow the sled down. The scrapes led to a hole and a lot of churned up snow at the bottom, where the sled had probably crashed and had then been pulled out. Sophia walked a few steps down the slope and was able to keep her footing. Come on, she called. Flora stepped out as gingerly as possible but in an instant, her feet splayed in four directions and she was on her belly, sliding helplessly. No amount of scrabbling could stop her. She plowed into her traveling companion, knocking Sophia's feet from under her. Sophia yelped and tried to stop herself with her claws, but Flora's weight carried the two of them down like polished stones. They struck the soft snow at the bottom with a plop close to where Alaric's sled had landed. Snow went up Flora's nose and she sneezed. Get off me, Sophia yelled and struck out with her claws to make, her po make the point. Flora squealed and struggled to find her feet in the soft drift. A few minutes later, they both stood panting, finally on the firm surface again. Nice job, pig, said Sophia between breaths. Someone explain to me how hooves make sense at any time on any animal. Do you have hooves, Zebby? I didn't hear you complaining when these hooves were kicking ship rats in the head so you could waltz up and bite them. Flora hadn't meant to ever mention this matter, but now that her words were out, she was surprised at her strong feelings. Good point, Sophia said at last. I'm not very good at saying sorry but I apologize. Flora didn't know how to respond, so she was happy when Sophia simply walked back onto the tracks. The snow on this plane was different from any snow Flora had seen before. In fact, it wasn't really snow. Flora stepped out and the ground crackled. 
She bent her head and looked closer. The field was covered with ice crystals, sticking up like a garden of little diamonds. Sophia was beside her now, and the two animals walked slowly into the crystal blossoms. Flora was enchanted. For a moment, she forgot she was hungry, tired, and ill-equipped to make this journey. She forgot to worry about Oscar. She forgot to worry that there would never be a useful job for her. She kicked up her front hooves with each step and watched the ice crystals scatter in front of her. But Sophia fell behind, picking her way along the trail tenderly. When Flora looked back to see what was the matter, she saw a spot of red inside each of her friend's small footprints. Sophia, said Flora, you're bleeding. Sophia stopped. Thanks for the info, Doc. She licked her front paws, took another step, and winced, but kept moving. It's like walking on needles. Sophia, I think we just discovered one good use for hooves. Climb on my back. Impossible. Sophia swished her tail. Does Sophia look like a circus monkey to you? Cats don't ride pigs. They don't ride anything if they have any dignity, and I'm saving my last shred. Well, who's going to laugh at you out here in the middle of nowhere? I don't care. Sophia is no monkey, and you're no pony. Thank you. Flora planted herself in front of Sophia. I know cats like to be independent and everything, she said, but you're going to hurt your paws, and then I'll really have to take care of you. The tip of Sophia's tail twitched back and forth. I suppose, but if you say a word of this to anyone, I won't, I promise. Sophia leaped easily onto Flora's broad back. Flora looked out at the two smooth lines of sled tracks. They seemed to go on forever. But the sun was shining and the trail ahead was clear. Her spirits lifted. She took her first few steps Hey, watch the claws, Sheriff, Flora said. You're digging them right through the coat and into my skin. Well, then don't walk so bumpy, snapped Sophia. Flora slowed down and tried to smooth out her walk. I wonder how Oscar was able to keep going in this stuff. Dog booties. Alaric was sewing some out of leather the night before they left. I think he got the idea from the sailors. All the other dogs had them. The tracks in front of them led out in a straight line that went on for hours. Finally, the ice crystals gave way to snow that became deeper and more and more powdery. Sophia hopped down and walked lightly across the surface. The churned up snow between the sled tracks showed that Oscar and Alaric had to work hard to keep moving forward through the powder. Flora also found the going tough, even after the land flattened out. Her hooves sank down until her jacket was dragging in the snow. She could no longer walk. Instead, she had to leap forward, charging through it. Every third leap, she had to stop and catch her breath. Sophia studied her. I don't think this is working. Just go ahead, Flora panted. You can go faster without me. When you catch up with them, let them know I'm coming. Sophia paused for a moment and then without a word, pranced away. Flora watched until she disappeared, then tried to struggle on, but there was no more leap in her. All she could do was flounder in the right direction. She got more and more exhausted, and each time she stopped, she imagined Sophia getting farther and farther ahead. She began to talk to herself to find strength. Never out of options. With each stroke of her legs, Flora repeated the words Luna had taught her so long ago. Then she added a phrase. Cats may have nine lives, but pigs don't give up. She worked like this until the light began to fade. Finally, Flora had to get some rest. A cave was easy to make here. All she had to do was flop down and wiggle her body about. As she rested her head, she felt the soft feathers of fresh snowflakes land on her snout. Flora thought for a moment that a snowfall might be bad news, but she was too tired to be concerned. 
What do you think, Zebby? Do you think the snowfall is going to mean bad news? I guess we'll find out tomorrow, won't we?